privilege and honor of welcoming you all to the Konkan Yuva's Job Seekers Webinar 2021. Company attitudes, job profiles, market tendencies all have shifted. While it has been challenging for some, it has created inroads for many more. In these trying times to help us achieve our potential and better our careers, we have been able to seek the guidance of our speakers today. It is my genuine pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He is a man of many hats. He is a spiritual guide, a priest, a teacher, a theologian, a linguist, and an author. He is an assistant professor from Pontifical Gregorian University, Rome, and having come all the way and joining us in Dubai. I would like to welcome Reverend Father Paul Rolfi Pinto, SJ, to grace us with the keynote message and his blessings. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, why is that? I'm sorry. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, over to you, Reverend Father. <laughs> okay, I'm in a very, a very beautiful place here in the, it's called uh, Wadi, uh, Wadi Seas. You can see the, see the fountain. <laughs> so it's beautiful. From here I, yeah, I'm addressing to you from here. Sorry for the uh, inconvenient place. Well, Avil has asked me to join you all for this, and I'm very happy to be to be greeting you all in the, uh, to give the short keynote address. Uh, I begin with a short story, uh, maybe which is fitting for this uh, this session. There was uh, this man uh, who was, uh, um, let's say, he was not too hardworking, and then he was seeking spiritual enlightenment. So we know that in India, when people seek a spiritual enlightenment, they go to the forest. So this man went to the forest, but he didn't go too far away from the village because he needed to beg for food. So he parked himself somewhere close to a village and he would go to beg his food. One day while he was meditating, he saw there was a fox, a crippled fox. He didn't have the front legs. He had only the hind legs. But still, the, the fox was very healthy. So this guy started wondering, how come? Uh, and to his friend of the fox. And he was surprised and the fox ate and he understood how the fox was so healthy. The second day, same thing happened. So this man started wondering, oh, if the nature is so kind to this fox, why should I work so much? No, nature will also provide food for me. So he decided to sit down without doing anything, without going to beg for food, thinking that uh, the, uh, somebody would give him, feed him. So he sat there one day without doing nothing, waiting for food, uh, second day, third day, and nobody came. They did not give him anything. And after one week also, there was nobody giving him any food, and he was almost fainting. And there came a, a holy man and saw this man in this state and asked him what happened. So he explained the whole thing and said, wasn't that a sign from heaven that I would be taken care? The holy man said, of course, it was a sign from heaven. But only thing is that you chose to be a fox. Why didn't you choose to be a lion? So this story is enlightening in the sense that when we are job seekers, when we look for opportunities, 
sometimes we are not attentive or sometimes we read the signs around us in a wrong way but if we are deep listeners we pay attention and if we have the right attitude any job that we do is first and foremost uh, a service to humanity often we begin with the premise that any job that we do is for earning or for remuneration true all of us need remuneration but we start with the with the sole scope of uh, earning only money and putting the scope of uh, serving humanity in the second place i think it is like putting the cart before the bull so i would like to give this this message for all of us all of you who are attending that let us keep our eyes and ears open and read the signs of times in the in the right way and uh, let me uh, start with the, this session with a short prayer and uh, give the give the blessing for for this session in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god our father and mother we thank you for this uh, this session of the konkan yuva bless all the youth who are attending this session bless all the speakers so that all who are attending this meeting may be benefited not only intellectually but also spiritually and learn the art of being attentive and read the signs of the times in the right spirit and may the blessing of god the almighty father son and the holy spirit descend upon you and uh, abide with you forever amen amen thank thank you father thank you reverend father for your wonderful message and blessing i would now like to call upon miss vinet to introduce our speakers for today and then call upon them to impart their wisdom miss vinet over to you Thank you Alicia. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest speakers today. Our first speaker today, Mr. Avil Pinto, is an HR and supply chain professional and founder of Dubai Jobs Hunt Facebook group. With over 15,000 professionals offering career guidance for job searchers in the UAE. He is currently the regional manager Middle East operations at Friesland Campina ME that is Rainbow Milk and brings to us today his diverse experience of over 16 years. Our next speaker is Mrs Valencia a recruitment professional with over 12 years of recruitment experience in the GCC. She has worked with some of the giants in the market such as Al Shaya Toyota OSN Batil to name a few and is currently with DHL reviewing and modification of CVs is second nature to this lady and she will be guiding us on how to enhance our digital personas to capture the attention of recruiters and last but not the least is Mr Wenzel who is the vice president of Arabian Dreams Toastmasters club and also their public relations face He is currently working at Daxada Management Consultancy as a talent sourcing operative exec operating executive. I request you all to please give a warm welcome to our all of our speakers. Now I open the floor to our speakers. Thank you so much Vinet for your warm introduction. That was energetic. Thank you very much. and thank you reverend father dr rolf pinto for your beautiful keynote address i think that makes perfect sense in the times that we are living and also for today's session 
So here am I. Here I am with my fellow two wonderful speakers, Valencia and Wenzel. So happy to be with you and all the lovely audience. I see 113 participants right now. Say hello, say hi. I, we would like to have not a monologue, but a dialogue. If you are looking forward for this session, say yes, I am looking forward in the chat box. And then we know that you all are engaging with us. Because if we have to give the best session, we need energy. And the energy that comes is through engaging each other. Okay. Yes, Abhi. Uh, can we have a picture of all the participants if they open their video cam now before yes. we start the session? Yes. So I encourage everyone to come on the video so your lovely faces would be captured. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. We would like to see all our participants. Yes. Somebody's just taking the photo already? Yes, just a moment. Okay, last one. Okay, perfect. Done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all, all of you coming on the video. Now, first and foremost, we would like to know you. Are you an active job seeker? Or you're looking for career growth or a career change? Put in the chat box. If you're looking for a job, what is the job that you're looking at? looking for, you can mention the title in the chat box. So at least we know what the audience joining us and accordingly, we will address the session. Can I see people responding on the chat box, please? Thank you, thank you. Dimple, thank you, Lena, even, thank you. We will also capture, uh, save this chat box to refer later. I'm sure you will have, at, uh, registered for the session mentioning all these details. Excellent. Okay. Today you all know that Konkan Yua, along with Young Adults Ministry, have hosted this session. Thank you for initiating this. This is need of the hour. And I, once upon a time, was a job seeker. I was without a job for five months. And likewise, my fellow speakers, Valencia, was without a job for six months last year during pandemic where she was made redundant and how she managed to find another job. And my friend Wenzel, he was on visit to the UAE and for almost one year, Um, which will address not only the best of the job search tools and techniques, but also how one should be prepared, how you should have digital presence. And most importantly, it is about what kind of mindset we should have. So let us dive in. And the theme is so amazing today. Future to be right. Future to be right. Now, I would invite you to put in on the chat box, what is the future you are seeking for? What is the bright future you are seeking for? It could be one word, one sentence mentioned in the chat box. Or what is, the, what is that you are looking forward from this session? Kishore, job in Dubai, challenging and managerial position, lovely. Growth, Jesse, thank you. I'm taking some time to understand how eagerly you all are looking forward and what you want to learn. That's most important. 
how to crack the job market positioning myself career opportunity secure career path job in dubai job security self sustaining getting job in ue i believe all of, all the other audiences are reading this chat box okay super thank you now let me share a slide to let you know what we are going to cover and then it will be a very different session unlike you have attended many sessions where speaker will come they will speak for half an hour or 45 minutes but here we would engage between each other which is between valencia and wenzel and from our life experiences we are going to share experiential learning where we have walked the path we have gone through failures and how did we deal with it and how did we rise from there would that be good there's a lot of information nowadays available on google on youtube but it's very important to understand from the horse's mouth how one dealt with the situation right so allow me to share my screen so if you are sitting there and wondering how is the ua job market trending now which jobs and skills are in demand how many of you would like to know or have an answer for this raise your hands or put an s in the chat box how many of you would like to know which are the authentic online job portals job boards besides just applying for jobs posted on whatsapp or other facebook groups what is digital presence and why is it important it's much easier to get a job through a strong referral is that true as per se telling cv is crucial and super important to find the target job how is that relevant for me what is tailoring cv let's learn that today i have been applying for jobs but i am not getting responses calls what should i do what what would be the best way to apply for to approach job search and finally how should one prepare to a certain interview now if you are somebody waiting to hear a response and answer to any of these questions then you are at the right place and we are going to help you we are going to help you address more questions also at the end of the seminar and in between the way we have structured this session you can take screenshots of the ppt there are very few slides that we will share but whenever we are sharing you are free to take the screenshots for your reference later and for any information you can also take the screenshot and if there are any questions you can put it in the chat box our friend farrel will be taking the questions and he will be asking us so that we can address at the end and now let me open the floor to our lovely two other speakers valencia and wenzel thank you so much for being with us and i'm happy to moderate and be a panelist together to share my experience and learning as well so where would you like what would you like to start or begin with thank you thank you avil it's always a pleasure to share the floor with you too but <laughs> if ever i come behind you, you then the the show is stolen by you for sure so <laughs> i'm going to let you take lead today as well um i remember you we spoke about you know what the market looks like what are the trends in the market and you had done an in-depth study like why don't we start off by showing our audience what are the vacancies out there and how the market looks like despite the pandemic that would be a good start i think absolutely thank you valencia thank you that's very important to know uh, recently i delivered a session uh, for a community in bangalore on future of employment and i myself was alarmed or probably concerned and at the same time excited because when we look at challenges there are also opportunities so pandemic has disrupted the entire world right and and nevertheless it has created opportunities it has taught us new ways to do things 
I never could imagine that we could operate from home, working from home. And there are different ways of doing things today. So let me share some insights on the world outlook on employment, some unemployment rates, and then we will look at how UAE is trending and what jobs are in demand. Okay, so let me share my slides once again. So before I would uh, speak about world employment outlook, I would also like to talk about which world we are living in today. It's called the VUCA world. How many of you know what is VUCA? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Last year, beginning of last year or March 2020, nobody knew a virus could put us or lock us at home. And since then, a lot of things have changed. So we are living in a volatile market. It's uncertain. What is tomorrow? People can't travel. My wife and kid are stuck in India for the last four months. And I don't know when they'll be back. It's become complex with added competition. And it is so ambiguous. So how do we deal with this? So each of us are going through. Now, first thing is we need to accept it. Yes, we are living in a VUCA world. What do we do? How do we deal with this? People are losing jobs. They have to look after the family, fulfill basic necessities. I lost three of my dearest family members last year and I couldn't be there for the funeral. It was too emotional. But we had to deal. And how do you deal with it? So this is something that I looked at and I found this. And I practice on a daily basis. And that's why I'd like to share this. So when you see volatility, it's good to have a vision. What do I want? What next for me? I cannot look at the challenges or problems or drown with it. I have to find a solution. I have to figure out how others are dealing with it. If everybody is facing the same challenge, then how someone else is growing, what is he doing different, he or she? And then comes uncertainty. When you're uncertain, it's probably time to invest on learning, to understand. And when you're facing complexity, seek clarity. In the words of Tony Robbins, he says, clarity is power. Clarity is power. When you know where you're heading, and very focused, that creates energy. Where your focus goes, energy flows. And for ambiguity, you got to be agile, agility. This market, this, these times that we are living requires constant change. For people who are not familiar with Zoom, today you all are on Zoom. We were not used to working from home and attending meetings or doing work virtually. Today we had to, we had to adapt. So one great news for you is human race, the history has proven that no matter what challenge that was thrown to human race, humans always have raised. They have always risen. They've they dealt the situation. And that's the beauty that we all have the ability to cope and get stronger by the day. So my mentor once said that Avil, when you face a situation or a challenge, you can go through it, go through it, or you can grow through it. Now, who are you? Do you like to face the challenge and just go through it? Or you want to grow through it? Type in the chat box if you want to grow. If you want to grow, then you are in the place today that I want to grow, I want to make a difference, I want to be the best version of myself so that I will have the best career, a best job, and live my dreams, okay? Thank you. Now, before we grow or do whatever, look at this quote. I get reminded or I remind myself every day about it. If I fail to plan, I am definitely planning to fail. So, the bottom line is I have to plan. So what do I plan? 
And that is why we are here today. What you should plan, what you should research, how you should go about these challenging situations. Because you're not alone. There are many people around you. We have also gone through and we still go through. So it's important to plan. No house is built without a foundation. Burj Khalifa is not standing so tall without having 52 meters of foundation underneath. So it's huge and it is all about having the right foundation, which is planning. Now, let me share with you what is the world employment and social outlook trends. I don't have the good news, but I would like to share with you just to share the statistics here. Global unemployment is expected to stand at 205 million people in 2022, greatly surpassing the level of 187 million in 2019. Unemployment rate at 5.7%, which was last seen in 2013. So what did this tell you? That you're not alone. So just be sure that you're not just going through this journey. There are many others. So it's about how to deal. And first thing right now, I want you all to do is raise your right hand, okay? Look at your palm, okay? Do it with me, all the speakers, everybody. I can't see all the faces, so I believe that you all are doing. Be honest to yourself. So look at your palm, okay? Smile at it and bring it on your left shoulder and tap it. Tap, 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 tap. Awesome. You feel good? The reason I'm saying this is because there are many people who are around us who might have seen this invite, but they didn't join, but you're here. That means you would not be in this statistics after you have finished this listening to the session and putting the action points that we would tell you. Compared to 2019, an additional 180, 108 million workers worldwide are now categorized as poor. So I would not like to go in it, but here is a summary. Uh, the map that you see, the red zones, the red colored, the countries, South America, some parts of the Europe, South Africa is highly affected. It, is, it, is, it has the recorded, recorded high in terms of the unemployment. All the details are available on in, in international labor organization. So you, can, you are free to go and download this and see the labor statistics worldwide. Now comes, what about UAE? How UAE is trending? Now I saw a lot of you news articles and since I've been in UAE, I've been counseling a lot of job seekers and we conduct a lot of seminars and sessions, meetups. And I also do videos on our group, Dubai Jobs. And, and these are the things that we share there. And what is it? UAE job market bounced back with 30% more jobs in January to March period. That's good news. 60% of UAE employees plan to hire more workers in 2021. And finally, UAE Gulf job prospects set to improve as more businesses head back to pre-COVID-19 mode. That is Hayes report. Now this tells me that there are opportunities in the market. Now where are the opportunities? Now when you go to job search engines or job portals, you will see a lot of job vacancies. Now you will apply for jobs. What happens? You will not get re responses. You will not you'll not get that job because there's huge competition. For one job, there would be 500 to 1000 applications. The important thing is how do I stand out? How, how would I be the top five in the top five shortlisted candidates? And that's why I have our amazing speaker, Valencia and Wenzel, who will also help you to understand how you can make a great profile so that you will be in the top five. Now here you have the mix of op occupations. It's very important to note how the jobs are trending. The scope of jobs in blue category, the color colored in blue is, is increasing. There's a demand for it. And the ones in gray and black is slowly decreasing. So this is the estimated change in share of total employment. Now, if you look at occupational category, health aids, techs and care workers, they are huge in demand as we see. In pandemic, the, the number of health workers, healthcare professionals was highly in demand and still it continues. STEM professionals, people with science, technology, engineering and mathematical background, they are in demand. 
health professionals, managers, business and legal professionals. Please do take a screenshot because if I explain in total, it will take time. So in the interest of time, I will move to the next slide. But it's very important to know how the, how the employment trend is changing, the job categories particularly. Now let's look at which are the most in demand jobs right now. So this is a survey conducted by LinkedIn between April to May, between two months, among the thousand jobs that were posted, these job categories or these job titles have seen sharp increase. Financial advisor, retail sales associate, specialist store associate, and so on and so forth. Now you'll see a trend here. I will show you the next 10 jobs which, which are in overall in demand. This is not a survey done, but LinkedIn has seen most jobs that are posted by the companies. Software engineer, salesperson, store associate, registered nurses, animal groomer, project managers, retail sales and driver, etc. Now let me take you further. What are the top trending jobs? AI specialist. Now I'm giving you this reference to the global market here. AI specialist, blockchain specialist, fitness commitment counselors. Fitness is considered a trending industry. Medical and healthcare professionals, creative professionals like photographers, creative artists, bloggers. Then comes sales professionals, developers, online teachers, data scientists, digital marketing specialists. Please note these jobs eventually are going to grow and they will be in demand. Okay. The reason I say this is look at the top trending industries because if you have more jobs is because the industry is trending. Now, which are the industries that are trending? Internet of things, artificial intelligence, computer and data scientists, cybersecurity, drones, robotics, virtual reality, genomics, something you need to educate your children and the future generation. Genomics is the study of human body. It is going to be, it's estimated market size of $68 billion. E-commerce, as we know, we do everything. We, we today order online. Everything, everything that hap happening is probably something or the other connected to e-commerce. So it's going to grow big time. So there's a huge scope then e-learning and renewable energy. So these are the 10 future proof jobs in the UAE with high salaries. So as more roles become automated, these professions will stay in demand for the next 20 years. So please take a screenshot. I will not read every uh, job title here. But again, if you see the trend, it's artificial intelligence, data scientists, management consultants and with the salaries. This is for people with experience of eight to 10 years to 15 years. Top job sites to search and apply for jobs in the UAE, which I will come back. So for now, this is what I would, would like to share uh, Valencia. I hope this would help people in terms of knowing or understanding which are the trending jobs and uh, industries right now. Great, Alan. That was definitely wonderful insight. I think I'm pretty much impressed with the numbers there. I think people in the UAE or even planning to come to the UAE, I think they're definitely in luck because with the numbers you've shared. And uh, fingers crossed, I hope these are accurate and that they really go as per these forecasts so that we all have jobs by the end of this year. Now, um, I think something that I would definitely like to bring across today is the importance of the CV in this entire process. Now, whilst uh, there are job opportunities out there, I think something that is really important is to ensure that you can cope up with this market. And something that really, really is important is your CV. Now, I believe that the CV is the first impression to any recruiter. What I mean by that is, during this pandemic, I think we've been more virtual in nature and the first impression or the first uh, set, step that you take towards a recruiter is your CV itself. So I'm going to take the liberty to just share my screen today and give you insights or examples as to 
what a CV should look like. Now, I think all of you out there are pretty lucky because I've never done this before, but I'm, I'm going to share with you my own CV so that you can understand what a CV should ideally look like. Bear with me a second. I'm just going to open it because I haven't really prepared any slides. So I'm going to have to keep opening and closing some uh, windows until I can show you a good uh, of CV. Okay, great. So I've got my CV right here and I'm going to share it with you right now. Here we go. So for those of you who know me, probably know me as Valencia Fernandez and a recruitment professional. And here is my CV. Now, in my CV, what I have done here, it's about three pages. And what I have done in my CV is, of course, your CV should always start with your name. Your most important contact information is always at the top, yeah? So that would include your location, some of the important information, your phone number, your email address, and a LinkedIn profile. Now, your LinkedIn profile is really important, majorly because you're not only looking for um, for your CV, they will also like to look at your digital presence, which is your social profile, and that would be LinkedIn for a recruiter. So you've got a title right at the top. You start off with something called the key skills. Now, these skills would differ from person to person, and this would be uh, more to do with uh, your particular role. So for me as a recruiter, I've spoken about recruitment and retention, ADS management, millennial and internships, bulk volume, and so on. Then, of course, I've gone into the details of my job that I have done so far, which includes my last job, which was at Patil. Although I currently work for DHL, this is an old CV. And then, of course, I've given a brief about the role itself. Now, the reason why I took the liberty to write what Patil is about is because I can include certain keywords that are not present around my CV. For example, luxury retail. Now, that's a keyword if someone is looking for a recruiter who could recruit for luxury retail, then uh, they could find this keyword in my CV. Then my job title and my promotion uh, details, because I went from a talent acquisition business partner into a corporate ma recruitment manager role, and the tenure that I spent there. Then I've spoken about my achievements in the role, where I streamlined the recruitment process. I brought down the SLA date. So these are all achievements in my role. And then of course, I went into the responsibilities. Then I did the same with the rest of my jobs and other jobs held because these were older than 10 years. I have put them under a title called other jobs and voluntary services that I took care of, my education, what are my personal details, the languages I speak, the visa status and my notice period and my driving license and any other information that would help them know that I'm a recruiter and I'm here for business. So I've put in things like the locations I've recruited for, the types of ATSs I've worked with, the tools I've used to recruit, and of course the positions I've recruited for. All right, now having said that, a CV, there is no CV where it's one size fits all, okay? So I want to take you to an example. Now, let's say that you guys are recruiters. So before I proceed, how many of y'all found my CV quite useful? Raise your hands if you found that pretty useful, if you got some insight. That's great. Oh, I love the numbers are rising. Okay, great. So you found a good CV. So far, did your CV have all the information that I mentioned? So I'm talking about your name. People forget names. Yes, they do. Uh, phone number, email address. Most of them, that's great. Now, very important question. How many of you actually have your LinkedIn profile on your CV? Raise your hands if you have your LinkedIn profile on your CV. How many? Okay. Okay, great. So that's very few. So we've got about 138 participants with about just 14 or maybe 20 people who have the LinkedIn profile. But I'm here to tell you that you must have your LinkedIn profile there, okay? Because your LinkedIn profile is your social presence that is more visible than your CV. Now, while you think that you sent your CV to about 50 people, your LinkedIn profile is probably being viewed by over four times that number. So you must have that presence on, okay? Now, let's take a, another example. So. Me as a recruiter, something that really helps when you see a CV is something that's nice to your eyes. Now, if I saw uh, a bird walking by and I saw a vulture and then I saw a peacock, what would you look at? You'd look at the peacock. It's bright. It's beautiful. And you'd be afraid of the vulture. Am I right? Say yes or no. 
Yes or no? Correct. So you want to see something beautiful. So let's take a look at this, okay? I'm going to give you an example of something um, that I've seen in the past, and I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think, okay? I'm going to share something with you right now. So um, let's say that we all are recruiters, like me and Wenzel, and that we wanted to recruit for a chef, okay? Let's say we want to recruit for a chef. Now, I found a CV. Would you like this guy to be your chef? Would you look at this and say, oh, I want this guy as my chef. He's got a tie on. He's got a little beard going on. He's got uh, kitchen management, planning menus. And pretty much that's about it of his CV. And well, there's more. Okay, so this is all his details. Yeah. So this is a CV of a chef. Now, how do you like the CV? Is it nice to the eyes? You are hiring a chef. Say yes if you think the CV is good. very descriptive, no, no basic, okay, well, all right. Raise your hands if you like the CV. Raise your hands if you like the CV. I wanna see the raised hands, because that's gonna be a poll number for me. Raise your hands, do you like the CV? You're recruiting for a chef right now, do you like the CV? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Cluttered information. Good, good, good observation, Dominic. Okay, 13. Okay, so let's stop there. So we've got 13 people who think this is a good CV. Now, let's say I'm still recruiting for the uh, chef and I choose this guy. What do you think of this guy? Now, would you take this guy? Now, you came across both these CVs and you think, oh, let's, let's hire a chef. Now raise your hands and tell me, would you take the previous one or this one? Raise your hands if you would take this guy in a heartbeat. Raise your hands. I wanna see those raised hands, come on. Raise hands, raise hands, raise hands. How many of you would hire this guy as the chef? Raise your hand if you think this guy is a good chef. Raise your hands if you think this is a good chef. Good one, okay, okay. All right, yep, okay, fine. Now. Now, okay, so best CV. Okay, so now if you had an option between the first one and the second one, I want you to chat in the chat box and say one or two. One is the old one, one is the, the blue one. So two, 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 two. Oh, you'd still go for one. Okay, two, 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 two. Okay, there we go. It's unanimous, right? It's unanimous. So this is exactly what we're getting to. Okay, this is exactly what it is. Now, see, you're, the two is still going on and two is in the running. This one person said one. Now, both the CVs are this very same person. Both the CVs are the very, very same person. So let, let's take a look at that, yeah? So I'm gonna show you this, share screen. So this is uh, one of my chefs when I worked back at Batil. His name is Edgar Pereira. This is a CV I created for him last year. And this is also his CV. So let me show you this. Let me show you the old CV. This is also Edgar Pereira. We both the same CVs. Do you see what a difference it makes when you present your CV differently? Do you see what a difference it makes? Say yes if you've seen the difference. Say yes if you've seen the difference. Yes. Great, so I hope that was a very valid example and that you actually got some insights into it. Now let's take a look at cover letters, okay? Now, what, what is the difference? Let's talk about Edgar for a second there. So what's the difference that we saw? Okay, what we saw is, um, okay, let me just share this as well. So what we noticed here is, what we noticed here is the fact that a good CV is short and easy to read. We went through just one page for Edgar, correct? We saw just one page for Edgar and it was short and easy to read, yeah? Then it is one with the right amount of information. You saw it, he's wearing his chef uh, attire, you knew he was a chef, so it was right there. It had no mistakes, okay? So there was no gaps, there were no errors in that uh, CV. Then it had a logical order because the CV, in fact, uh, showed you his dishes that he has presented and he had his key skills there as well. And finally, it suited the position above all. 
Okay, so this is what a good CV should ideally look like. You need to ensure that you have the right amount of information, not too lengthy, don't have errors. Please check for spell checks. Okay, and above all, it has to suit the profile itself. So if you're a chef, put on your chef attire, get your hat on, and maybe show something um, that the recruiter would want to see. Okay, now let's move on to something uh, like cover letters. Okay, now cover letters are, well, they used to be very common at one point point in time okay however today it is more important for you to ensure that you give a cover letter when you are asked because sometimes too much information is no good information okay so if you are creating a let's say a cover letter then let's take a look at an example of a cover letter I have created for myself I'm gonna share my screen with you yet again and I'll give you an example of the cover letter that I have created, okay? Now, um, as you can see, there is something, oh, okay, well, this is not the cover letter I wanted to show you. Uh, please bear with me. I'm trying to uh, juggle through some of the windows I have open as I don't have the option. Here we go. So I'm gonna show you a cover letter that is crisp and to the point and takes you through whatever it is. now. So I have written over here to a company called ICBA, where I've told them in my first paragraph that I am a passionate HR professional because I'm applying for an HR role. In my next paragraph, I've written the type of sectors I've been a part of, which is vital to this role. The type of recruitment I have done, in what I have done in the recent past, what is my role there as an internal recruitment, uh, giving them a little bit of my achievements, and finally, looking forward to hearing from them. Very crisp, very uh, to the point. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and a closure. So it's five very small paragraphs, an introduction, what I've done so far, the type of experience I come with, what I have done in my current role, my achievement, and finally a closure, asking them to call me back with my details there. Okay, now this always is gonna go in attachment to your CV and that's more of a backup. So let your CV do the talking while your cover letter throws some light for them to look into your CV, okay? Now, apart from CVs, um, like Abel was asking, um, how did, like he mentioned that, you know, that I am, I was looking for jobs and I did attain many interviews during the lockdown despite there being no jobs out there. So something that I so, think Valencia, was really important. Uh, just to pause you, uh, you shared very insightful uh, details, uh, sharing your right. own CV and cover letter. Yeah. Uh, many people ask this question that uh, is cover letter necessary? Is it important to attach in the email or send along with the application? So what's mm -hmm. your uh, view or opinion on this? Well, I think the cover letter should be shared only when asked. I would refrain from writing cover letters into the body of an email when sending your CV out because that's just too much information for a recruiter to read in an email. So I would suggest if you're sending a cover letter, send it only if asked. If not, just send across a CV. Your CV should be your main document for any application. That would be my opinion. And a cover letter if asked. Okay, thank you. Um... Well, I, Valencia, I know that you were, uh, you struggled through pandemic, uh, like many others uh, probably in the audience. Um, I know it is not a, uh, it's not easy to go through uh, the times that we're living in. However, I know you exceptionally excelled in what you did. I, People reach out to me saying that I have not got a call for three months, six months. I've been applying for jobs. And in your case, I believe you had at least three to four interviews lined up or you were attending interviews every month. Correct. Now, please help the audience in terms of what did you do differently? Okay. That probably they might learn and they can also apply during uh, that job search now. Uh, and, and you clearly had certain companies that you wanted to work and today yeah. you're you're actually working in one of your dream companies yeah. Okay, yeah that you always aspired so please please share your secrets or secret recipe rather definitely <laughs> uh, and i would be happy to happy to learn from you as well definitely definitely i think this is a topic i hold really dear avil and i think you knowing me you definitely know how much i i like to thrive in situations where it's difficult because 
I want to come out victorious. You know, I, I definitely want to ensure that I have excelled at whatever it is. So this is a topic that I definitely want to address to the audience today. So I want you to raise your hand if you are in a difficult situation and when it comes to your job, to your job search today, raise your hand. So how many do we have there? Three. Okay. The number's rising. You're in a difficult situation. Yes, I get it. How many of you have been made redundant, loss of job, not happy. You want to move, raise your hand. Just keep raising your hands as in if, if it, you know, kind of relates to you. There we go. So the numbers are rising. Okay. Now, if we had hundred people, this is almost quarter of the crowd feeling that and it's still rising. So yes, I was in a very, very difficult situation. I'll very quickly tell you what my difficulties were. So if you can relate to it, then you know I have been there and I'm coming from a place of known that, done that. Okay, so I, I was pregnant. I delivered in December 2019. And uh, soon after, I joined work without even completing entire maternity leave. I, I think mothers out there, you would probably understand. I gave birth to my baby in December 2019, a C-section, and I barely recovered and I joined work back in Feb. So in early Feb, which means I stayed at home for about 40 days. And then I joined work only to be made redundant soon after. So here I am, a new mom with a little baby and I'm made redundant. So I've lost my job. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've not even recovered from the postpartum depression that I went through, but I'm here without a job at the peak of the pandemic. I was made uh, redundant and soon after we go into lockdown. So I know that there are no jobs out there. Companies are closing down and so on. Now, being me, I said, well, I've got to fight through this. I've got a little baby to feed, so I need a job and I'm going to get out there. And I was like, you know what? It's okay if they make me redundant. There is another company out there for me and I'm going to find that company. Now, I've always said, this is nothing new. Um, I've always said there are three companies I've always wanted to work for. There's DHL, always in the top of my list, followed by Nestle and GE. If you look at any of my past videos, you, you will see this. It's not something I came up with. So what I did was as soon as the lockdown happened, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take, take a step back and let's do what I want to do. So I said, I want to work for DHL, Nestle, or GE. So I start setting my CV to these companies, okay? Apart from that, I was like, you know what? I need to sustain my stay because there's a lockdown and companies are closing down. So DHL, Nestle, and GE may not sit just right, right now. So I've got to find another job. So I started applying everywhere. Now I want to show you what I did because I think I will, to answer your question, the key to what I did was consistency and persistence. And above all, a strategic plan for your job search. Now, I always say that, you know, a job search is a job in itself. You cannot sit back and say, I, um, you know, for whatever reason, I've sent so many CVs and, uh, you know, um, I'm just waiting for a call back. That's, that's just not going to happen because you cannot just sit, uh, apply and think that, you know, something's going to change for you. You have to be persistent. So let's take a look at this. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you right now to show you what I did during the lockdown. So I sat down one day and I said, let's do this. So I created a folder and this folder was called job search. Okay, in my job search folder, what I did was I, I created everything. So it started off, as you can see here, for some reason, I can't see my cursor. Okay, so as you can see here, I started with something called a video interview. Okay, so in this thing was, apart from your CV, I think all of you need to have a video of yourself answering very basic questions to hold on to a video CV, okay? Now, what is a video CV? A video CV is a recording of yourself answering very basic questions. So the first question you're gonna answer in your video CV is tell us about yourself. So you're gonna in introduce yourself, okay? So take a look at these. So these are some of the videos I recorded of myself, talking about situations I've handled, the team structure I've maintained, um, the current role I have, my HR experience in construction, and how I have faced a challenge. Okay, so these are examples of what a video CV should have looked like. Okay, so you take a recording and ensure that you have it to upload on any website that may ask you. The other things I did was I created a folder with all my legal documents to ensure that they were right there. So my CV, my photo, 
uh, my cover letter. Now, sometimes you need to tailor your CV as well because I'm in recruitment, but I could have also applied for HR. So I had an HR CV and a talent management CV as well. So everything there. Now, once I had everything ready to send out to anyone who asked me, something that was really important in my entire job search was networking. So I used LinkedIn to constantly connect with people. Now, there are two ways that I went about it. I, uh, for one, I, what I did was I, bear with me, I'll just stop there. So what I did was I took two, two routes to it. One, I wanted to work for DHL, Nestle, and GE. So I started connecting with the HR people within these three organizations. On the other hand, I used to get onto LinkedIn and take a look at all the vacancies that were available out there. And all the vacancies that were available out there, I tried to connect with the people from that respective company. Once I did that, I started to connect with them and receive contact information. So either they connected with me on LinkedIn, either I found their email address online. So what I then did was I created an Excel sheet. Okay, in that Excel sheet, what I did was, I started maintaining their email addresses. So the official email addresses, only, okay? Apart from that, I put in their names there. So what it was, what was happening was, I was maintaining an Excel sheet with so many contact details of different people. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a list, an exhaustive list, a really, 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 really lengthy list. Okay. Valencia, Valencia before yeah. you share that, I'm so excited right now, whatever that you shared. Um, what you're going to share, I'm sure, uh, the way you have organized yourself and your job search is kudos. It's uh, amazing. When I meet people, they're all over the place. Uh, it's it's being organized. It's it's like the starting uh, to have the right foundation. I would say that okay, what do I want and how should I prepare for it? Now, you shared that with us. Uh, now the another challenge of job seekers. Okay, I have been the victim once and. It, it, it felt like uh, too tedious. Uh, it was uh, too monotonous or rather it was uh, draining uh, when we just apply and we don't receive feedback or response. You feel low. Uh, you get into that mode of depression or, or then you just yeah. don't do anything else. And when you get into that mode, uh, how do you recover? How, mean, how you restore that energy? Because it's so important. And I have seen you that you probably would have gone a little low and you would call me and then you're back again, right? Uh, also, when, you sh sh when you're speaking, uh, probably give that insight on how did you maintain on a daily basis being, uh, you know, having the right energy. And, and I'm sure whatever that you're going to share right now is a big, big win for job seekers because it will save your time to, to an extreme extent. So over to Valencia, thank you. So I definitely, thank you for asking me that question, Abel. That's really something that I want to highlight. Now, during the course of the pandemic, uh, so after being made redundant in March, right from March up until September, I may have gone through about 17 interviews. So right from March until September, I went through 17 interviews. Now, needless to say, most of the opportunities out there were dropping me a, a notch or two lower or like drastically reducing my salary package. So obviously it wasn't something that I was keen to embark on. So I went through it and I'm gonna tell you this very honestly. Employers, there are several, several employers out there who, who took advantage of the situation and exploited candidates and employees out there in the market. And I was a victim of that as well. So what happened was I took I went through uh, several opportunities, okay? So I went through 17 interviews during that course. And uh, every time I applied, I got through, I put the last round. There was one company that took me through the last round and made me go through like eight interviews. And I finally reached the last round and they tell me, we can't afford you. Now they want the person, they want the caliber, they want the potential, but they don't want to pay. So obviously they were trying to downball me, which I said, no. I'm not going to take it. And they said, okay, fine. We can't afford you. You can, you know, stop continuing and stop following up with us. So obviously that kind of puts a dent into your confidence. You're thinking maybe I should settle for something less. Uh, maybe I am expecting too much. There are no jobs out there. Why should I do this? But let me tell you one thing. The second you decide to fall down and just accept whatever it is, that's where you're going to be. Now, it's okay if you want to learn something new and you want to start from scratch, 
But if you're going to accept it just because you're desperate, remember, desperate decisions never last. Okay, so when you tend to feel that, oh my God, this is this is it. This is the only thing for me. Let me take it. That's when you will get stuck in that rut, and it's going to be so difficult for you to get out. So. I remember times I have literally hit rock bottom. I'm like, there's no job out there. Six months out of a job. Of these six months out of a job, my husband is also not getting paid. So there's no money in the house. And my baby's really small. We have a nanny that we have to pay. Uh, obviously, we couldn't send her back because of the lockdown. So there was no way to send her back. And we're pretty much stuck with everything. And I think the only way for you to get out of such situations is to take a step back. Many a times I would hit rock bottom and it was so difficult. I spent days in bed just saying, you know what, I don't want a job. I'm just going to sit like this. But that's not the solution. I think what worked for me was to pick up things I loved. So Abel being my greatest, greatest support during so many times, he, he brought me out of it. He said, okay, well, you do CV writing. Let's do talk shows. Let's do videos. Let's do LinkedIn articles. And he's taken me through so many. We've done so many sessions together, helping job seekers out there, sharing this information with them. And I think that kind of boasted or motivated me to see the type of difference I was doing to a community, even though I couldn't help myself. But that motivation comes from them telling me, wow, you're doing something great. So I would pick myself up again saying, okay, I cannot. I remember this one conversation, Avil, and I, I think you can back me up on this. I remember calling Avil and saying, I have to find a job because if I do not find a job, I have let down the community. They will think, oh, this woman talks about finding jobs. And here she is without a job and it's six months. And I, that was my lowest I said, I'm, I'm going to disappoint a lot of people if I don't show them I can land a job despite the pandemic. And I took that as a sole motive. I said, I, I need to show this to people. So what I did was I continued looking and landed a job in September. I accepted it because it was close to home, uh, paid me right, just right, same profile. I took it only to realize 20 days later, I literally entered hell. I was walking and going to hell every morning for 20 days of my life. I even got, I even got scammed when I joined that company through somebody in the company and I lost money as well. So of course I hit below rock bottom. Literally I was in the core of the earth, like dug deep into the earth. And I was like thinking to myself, how am I going to get out of this? What am I going to do? And of course I, again, I stepped back and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let this all go. Cause the, the thing I realized is during this major breakdowns was every time I let go, things would just come to me. But the more I ran after it, they ran further away from me. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's take this. So this one day I remember, I go to a shower, I take a hot shower, the steam all around me. I'm like, I'm going to let everything go. I'm just going to let everything go. I'll just wait for something to come. I have struggled for almost a year now I have not gotten anywhere. It is the market. I am getting opportunities. I am getting calls. I will land something soon. And believe it or not, I took up a temp role with uh, another company from uh, October until December, only to land my dream job at DHL in Feb. Because I waited, I let go. And I said, if something is right, it will come to me. And believe it or not, for the number of times I have literally chased DHL with my CV, I never applied when that vacancy came up. And believe it or not, when you start to let go and you calm yourself down, I got a call from the DHL recruiter saying, guess what? You've sent your CV to us so many times. We cannot forget you. And today we have an opportunity. Why didn't you apply? And I said, I was not sure whether I would actually get through this time. And I got the job. Today I work for DHL as a recruitment supervisor there. And I'm doing what I love doing for the organization I've always loved. And I'm absolutely enjoying myself. So I will to answer your question. I think well, what, a biggest... lovely, what a lovely day <laughs> that you shared. And I mean, it was really touching to, to, to hear I the pain that you've bumps. gone through. The, the one thing that, that I learned from this conversation is, um, is the rock bottom where you said, I am going to land. There are opportunities for me and market is meant for me and I'm going to get a job. I think this affirmation with con conviction and belief is what, and letting go of that pain. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. 
I think the positive affirmations, if people are not aware how important they are, when it comes from your heart that you, each of us, Almighty has created each of us and we deserve to be great. We deserve to be great. So yeah. you can be only when you say to yourself, yeah, right? yeah. and that's important. Thank you, Valencia. Now moving forward. Yeah, yeah, moving forward. Question. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, Amal. Just, you, just you the were, last you thing were, that I need to show. Yeah, so I interrupted you when uh, you were supposed to show the list of uh, Correct. Yeah, the contacts. Now let's take it to the next level of Okay, we have the CV right, we have right, the right. right mindset and positive. Yeah. And now let's go and see how we can approach in terms of sending yeah. CVs. So there's something else that I did. Like I mentioned, I started, you know, uh, maintaining a C list. So here's a list of all the, you know, the recruiter email addresses that I used to have. And as you can see, it's a list of quite a few people. So what I did was I... Every time I connected with people, and these are 124 emails of people that actually had jobs at that point, and I kept sending my CV. So this included, of course, the recruitment agencies, recruiters within certain companies, and uh, those that had contacted me randomly from seeing my CV on Bait or Gulf Talent and so on. So I maintained this list, and I used to send CVs out. Now, I think Something that really worked for me that I would really like to show you was the mail merge option on Gmail. So I was trying to make things easy for me. Like I said, I was like, I'm going to let it go. Let this job search do itself. And I'm just going to wait back and watch what's going to happen. So what I did was I utilized the option of mail merge on Gmail and literally I will and the audience out there. I used to sit doing my thing because I had a new baby. I was trying to, um, you know, feed him, bathe him, clothe him and all that. And this is what was happening in the background. So as you can see here, while I was doing other things, my CV was just being sent everywhere. Can you see this? So I had one same uh, title. And while I was sitting back, all my CV was just going out. As you can see, my CV was just going out. I used the mail merge option. And my CV was going out to Beth, Carlotta, Katina, Sherry, Chris, Chris, Cindy, Coralie, and all these people that received my CV. So I used to do this on a regular base. So what I was doing was I had, a, I had my Excel sheet maintained. So a mail merge works on an Excel sheet. I then applied the mail merge option on Gmail, uploaded the sheet, kept my CV ready. And whilst I was doing anything, I could have been out shopping, but my CV is being sent at a regular interval to all these people. And it goes as a direct email, as you can see in this uh, option, if I open it, um, I think this is one of the things I can show you. It goes as an email, but beware, but when you're using the mail merge option, it could either make or break your application. So as you can see, it goes exactly like this. And it looks like a regular email that is addressed specifically to the person. It doesn't say dear sir or madam like most people do, as you can see. So you type your email and you just send it out. And that's pretty much it. So while you're sitting back, you can just show them the options and it's just going through. So I think that's what worked for me. I simplified my job search strategically and I landed where I am today. So I think that answered your question. So we yes, covered thank CV. you. Thank you, Valencia. That's a, a great piece of information. I think uh, audience should pay you for this because nobody else would <laughs> share this piece of information. So in a but way, let's say, share. let's, let's look at, uh, if you have yeah. to sh send 50 emails, okay, yeah. manually uh, versus this uh, mail merge uh, uh, tool, uh, how much yeah. of time that you better probably have saved? I think if you had to send an individual email, you'll have to change the name, you'll have to change the job role, you'll have to change the company's name and so on. So I think you're saving yourself at least if, if because mail merge allows you to send just 50 emails, I think you would spend about, let's say, 20 minutes per email. So 20 to 50 is uh, 1,000. So you okay, say I don't even want to calculate. <laughs> One thousand minutes. Like two, three days. Whatever, right? <laughs> it's, like so it, it's definitely saving you time, and I think yeah. um, building this gold mine above all, you know, I call it my gold mine because I think it is something so valuable to me, 
And it's important to have it because whether I find myself out of a job at some point, whether I find myself unhappy in my job, whether I think that I, I'm not growing here, I need a new goal, no matter what my reasoning is, I think I always have this gold mine to fall back on and start setting my CV again. And I'll start getting the call again. So the process is same. It's just a different timing or different situation. Amazing. I salute you, Valencia, for, for what you've done. Actually, um, that, I, that itself tells me that how focused you are with your career, with your, um, with your jobs. And, and at, at any given point in time, you know that you have a, you have a plan in action, how to go about yep. job search. So yeah. what is it? How, how did you get this name, Goldmine? <laughs> so I got my Goldmine because when I was moving to Dubai for the first time, yeah. uh, I started maintaining this list. Back then I had a list of over a thousand uh, emails and even more. I think I had reached a point where it was 1,168 emails. And I remember this one time my laptop almost shut off. And my biggest fear was, what if my sheet didn't get saved? So I realized at one point that she was so important to me. It was more valuable than gold to me at that point. So I called it my gold mine because so, I could lose anything so but this that. Is to the, this is to the audience. Whoever feels this piece of information, what Valencia has said, if it is important or help you, clap. please say yes or clap for her or say a big thumbs up or a hi, hello, heart, everything because you have no idea it is super important to maintain a contact list yeah. and it makes your life so easy and you yeah. have seen it right now live okay now uh, uh, let's move on uh, with the uh, time in mind uh, there are a couple of more topics to cover and as we promised the audience that there are questions that we will address so we will now uh, uh, invite Wenzel uh, so I call him vibrant Wenzel uh, so Valencia mentioned that networking is the key. And here I am with someone who walks the talk, who loves this word networking. Now, I have known Wenzel for almost a year and a half. He came on a visit visa. He attended one of the meetups um, in Dubai. And then he had to go back because he didn't find a job. Then again, he uh, came back uh, 2020, January. And guess what? Followed by that was pandemic. And let's hear from Wenzel. How did he deal with it? And what's his story? And how did he network? And why it is so important? So my friend Wenzel, I'm uh, eagerly waiting uh, to, to, to share your journey with, with the audience. Because I know that a lot of people on Visit Visa here and people who also without a job, even after having experience of this local market, uh, yet uh, there is that one fine line where people think that strong job referral is what works to get a job. So I'm sure that you have something uh, to say for that. Over to you, Wenzel. Thank you very much, Wenzel, for this warm introduction and a brilliant piece of information from both Avil and Valencia, a round of applause for them, please. Okay, uh, so here I go. My name is Wenzel and I come from Mangalore. Now, I would like to ask this question to the audience over here right now. And be honest with yourself because this is going to change your life because my mentor said on the first video when I saw him, he says, when you face a challenge, you either go through it or you grow through it. And I believe he did say that in this, in the session. So how many of you have got to know this or have you heard from your roommates or your family members or your friends around you saying he got a job because his brother or sister is working in the MNC. He's got a job because his father is a senior person in the company or you won't get a job because you don't have UA experience. Please raise your hands. Let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, I've got two, three, four, five, fantastic. Thank you, my dear friends. I am with you because I was there. Now, let me tell you what is a reference in Dubai, and this is what I've learned for the last one and a half years in my life a transformation life that I had. 
I used to think a reference is nothing but someone is referring to your company because he's, he or she is just a relative, but that's the wrong information that you have. Reference is nothing but you are creating or you are investing in yourself by going out of your comfort zone and showing what skills you have. Now, how many of us over here are going out on the social media or doing something, something good rather than just going and liking and commenting on Facebook? How many of us are using LinkedIn at least every day? How many of us? Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's, that's a good number though. Okay, okay. So let me tell you my story. And uh, it's, it's not something that I have scripted, but it is something that I went through every day in my life. So I landed in Dubai, came here for one month visa. And that's where I met my mentor, Avil, on the second day of my visit visa. And that's where Valencia also was the speaker for that session. Now, my previous company is Amazon. I had a good job, good salary, good benefits. I got promoted twice in just three years. And I was working for Jeff Bezos team, known as Escalation Specialist for the e-commerce world that is right now going, which is a trillion million dollar company like every other person we had to make a choice and i made the choice of coming to dubai because i had personal reasons and i was so happy and i took all my expenses whatever i earned i i, I came with a suitcase and boom here we are dubai is a place of opportunities now the first time you enter and i saw someone said you won't get a job. And that was just a slap on my face. And uh, you feel that, right? Everyone feels it, right? Everyone feels it when someone's, someone's trying to break your dreams. There are people who have told me you have invested in a wrong place. You have wasted your money. Please go back. But remember this, this thumb rule. And it's there with everyone. It's, it's not that someone's going to teach you. It's there. It's there from you, from the time you go to school, from the time you go to your college, you learn communities and everything. There are two things that a human being will always learn. One is a skill and second is a will. Remember this, if you, can, if you do not know how skills are, you can learn. But if you have a will issue, no one's going to help you because you have to just push yourself to just help yourself to learn that new skill. And that's what I did. I had the will to learn. I got, a, uh, I, 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 I went, I connected with one of the HRs who happens to be my manager right now. And I took my CV and I said, Hey, look, I was working in Amazon and I know about e-commerce and uh, everything is, is good and I can teach you. I mean, I can tell you what good I am in my process. But the day my CV was reviewed, trust me, guys, till date, I have modified my CV for more than 30 times. And that's when I landed my job. 30 times, and I'm not kidding you, 30 times, I have cried loudly in my room. I lost all of my friends that, that they were there when I had a job, but when I didn't have a job, there was no one. So one thing that I learned in the last event is you cannot just sit down, sit inside your room and just apply and just expect someone to give you a job. You need to ask. When you need to ask, ask, what is that I need to correct? What is that I need to change? It's called evaluating yourself. Go and evaluate yourself. And that's what I did. I evaluated on myself, on my CV, on, on my personal development. You get a good, critical, constructive feedback. And when you get it, it hurts. It definitely hurts. But trust me, that helps you for a long run. Now, I'm a guy with no experience in UAE, with with good, good certifications. I'm a Six Sigma green belt certified. 
I have got Amazon, Infosys, and a hospital in charge experience, total of 6.5 years of experience, and many more certifications, but one month, two months, there is no job. And then I get a call for an interview that I always wanted to work for an e-commerce company, and I did get a call. And I met the vice president, and guess what? The very next day, the lockdown was introduced. And everything goes back to square one. Everything, everything went back to square one. And you know for a fact that you can't step out of, the off, uh, of your room and neither you can go back to your country, but you have to just sit down and work on yourself. And that's where I decided to learn a new skill. You might have heard my introduction right now. I am the vice president membership for Arabian Dreams Toastmasters Club. Now, last year, I was nominated for Vice President Public Relations. Now, what is public relations? It's all about being very creative. It's all about being, uh, it's, it's, it's all about networking, right? You call someone, you just show your skills with just one poster. Now, I'm a person who never worked on a poster. No one. You can see my first poster in Dubai Job Sun and my last poster in Arabian Dreams Toast Masters Club, right? I just knew PowerPoint. And I learned to create a poster. I had a camera. Yes, I, I'm, I'm a passionate photographer, but right now everyone's, has, everyone's hustle and bustle. So you would not see my photography, but that one camera helped me to connect with a lot of people. And the first person that I connected was Avil. And from there, my journey started. I was introduced to one network, which is called KEL, which is called Kendra Entrepreneurs Limited wherein I had to go and invite as a photographer, okay, as a photographer, but then you will, you will meet new people. And these people are big shots. I call them in my, in, in my language, big shots, but that's where you understand the value of yourself, where you stand at that point of time by not asking that you need help. And, and someone just said that in, uh, someone just said that in the chat box, Visualization is good, but don't judge a book by its cover. Well, guess what? For a job seeker, you will feel always this when you try to connect someone on LinkedIn, people start ignoring you. And that's gone. That is a constant thing. And you will feel depressed. And that's happened to me. And that's hap that's happening to you as well. Right. But I never gave up. LinkedIn is what a tool that I used to go outside and show my work. And today, uh, they call me as a LinkedIn guru, but I'm, I'm yet to learn. But I connected when I came to uh, when, when I came from India. I just had 10 to 20 LinkedIn connections, but right now I've got 2,000 plus. It's just merely that we connected, we 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 got one on a call, we spoke, and you know we shared our ideas, we created meet, we had meetups, and then I started getting interview calls. You see, you see the uh, the the ripple effect. First two months, no calls, but when you started connecting and showing people what your work is, what your content is, what you write outside there, you start getting noticed. And my dear friends, I got many, many calls from LinkedIn just to attend an interview. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That was surprised, that, that surprised me. Now, the second thing that I learned more about networking is meeting new people because you see, I had this problem with me that I don't want to talk to people that I don't know. They are very strangers. They are strangers to me, right? I know my work. I have a laptop. I have got my experience and tuck, tuck, tuck. We, we, we clock nine hours of work and then we go back to our room. We have a weekend and then that's said that's life, but actually that's not life. That is a cage that you're stuck in right now. And I learned to get out of it. And yes, it's a habit. You will feel bad when you come out of it, but you will realize that you will learn more than whatever you could do previous or maybe just six months back. Right now, I am a Toastmaster and I'm a HR recruiter. Now, how did this, how did I get a job? Yes, my story right now. Now in this event, in this event, since it's pandemic, since you've got no experience, 
no job when you don't have a job that means no money and when you don't have a money when you don't have money which means you will suffer like depression you will sleep without food and water and i have been there and i have been there but i did not give up i have i had a great team for myself which is dubai jobs hunt one of them is my mentor over there who is a speaker today who changed my life or i i should say who transformed my life and i'm very grateful to him he taught me how to earn my bread by just creating posters or just by going and networking with people that's where i started getting calls hey i have an event can you come over i'll pay you this much hey i want you to do a video shoot can you do me can you do an edit i'll pay you so much and ladies and gentlemen i earned my bread for the last one year with all my camera work video editing posters and also doing meetups one of the best thing that happened to me was toastmasters that changed me because there were more number of people over there 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 are hrs there are uh, business entrepreneurs you get a mentor over there you get to learn how to go and give a speech or it's called public speaking right right now what if you're seeing me on the screen if you see me two years back i was so scared and so scared even even just switching on my camera but right now i can do live videos that's that's where it changed now what transformed my life is 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 not it's not a magic right it wouldn't happen overnight as I, as as my mentor said you either go through it or you grow through it so i i went through it and i'm climbing right now up in your life event if you're in a flight imagine if you're in a flight and the flight propeller right if it if it loses the engine you just go down right you just crash land but you need to pull yourself up because no one no one's going to pull you up one of the things that changed in my life today i am grateful for myself because i work on myself and not waste time on you know on on those movies or anything but i work on my skills i do my gratitude affirmations that keeps me positive every day that gives me my result at the end of the day and what i learned from this is nothing but it was a will that i wanted to learn a new skill in my life now yes thank you anjil uh, uh, <laughs> i know your story so it's really uh, emotional but you said two things which uh, which i i really connected one is the skill one is the will uh, you can learn the skill but will is something that has to come within and i think you are the living testimony of having that will walking that extra mile uh, going out of your comfort zone uh, so how did you network in terms of connecting the people so that you landed in the right job i think this is something which let people know and and i think yeah that would be very crucial yeah so see when you when you go for a meeting you feel that okay you know these people right but it's actually not what you need to do is you need to pick up the phone and ask them hey can i meet you i need some help now that's the problem with me i had this fear i had this fear of picking up my phone and just <laughs> saying okay hey how are you i was so scared to even text them saying hi how are you but that fear broke then i started meeting how i network is you cannot expect an immediate gratification right when when you ask for a help do not expect immediate response because they have their life events even they are busy and you wait for the time you ask for them hey can i meet you at this point of time or is it okay if they say yes i can if they say no i can maybe next week fine at least they responded to you right now that was the key i built a rapo with them building a rapo is very important for your network because it is going to help you for a, for a long run 
and that's what I did. I started building my network and today I know more than 1,000, 2,000 people around me in Dubai. Amazing, uh, Vendil. That's kudos to you for your efforts and it's not easy to go out there and meet people and build uh, rapport. So relationship is something that I uh, take away uh, from, from what you shared. So when you just meet people, I am in need, I need a job. Is it just okay to send a WhatsApp message or LinkedIn? Uh, hey, I'm looking for a job. Can you help me? Or uh, is there something else you could do? Probably Wenzel and Valencia can add to this because as job seekers, it's, as you said, in immediate gratification is that I want a job. So for that, I'll just connect with this person. I'll just send this message. It becomes like a task, you know. It, it's not something that comes from within to, to really connect to that person for something bigger. It's just not a job because it's a long-term relationship. So how, how do you see this? Uh, thank you for this question, Avil. Uh, as I said, immediate gratification is not something that you can expect at this point of time. Uh, I know a case, a scenario where I would like to explain. There was a person, I would not, I would not determine the gender over here. But this person reached out to me, okay? And at that point of time, I didn't have a job. I didn't, I didn't have a job. But as you know, for a fact that I'm a volunteer and I love to serve people when it comes to helping. And I can, I can, I can pledge myself that I can, I can do whatever I can for them in my hands. And I, I did refer the CV to one of my friends. And uh, the appointment was fixed. And uh, the best part of this person was uh, this person did go for an interview okay. and this person was also given a job. It, the person was offered a job and there was a, there was a request with this person saying that please respond, please respond to us in the next two days, like, which is the next 48 hours. Now, what happened over here is this person maybe wasn't some confused, uh, th this person wasn't confused mind and this person did not respond. But ideally did not even have a courtesy to come back and say, hey, look, I, I cannot join. Uh, maybe you can give this opportunity to someone else. And now that was the feedback which was given to me from this person. Now, the same person again reached out to me. And then again, I referred to a different place. And then what happens is this person was given some suggestions to work on the personal development on this thing. And we gave at least two good weeks of time to work on it and come back to us as it was a Christmas time. And this person did not even come back. Now, what you understand from this is this person is either not interested and that's the will issue that what we found, right? But then after a month, this person comes back saying that, hey, I need help. Can you please refer? And this did not happen only with me. This, this has happened with 10 different people that I know. And this, this person has approached to all these 10 different people. And when there is no response, this person gives a negative comment saying that you're not trying to help me. You see, you're breaking down the relationship. You're actually building a reputation of yourself over there. When I say good rapo, understand this. Don't think if he's going to respond to you, he's in good books. And if he's not responding to you, don't put them in bad books. This is all about yourself. You need it, right? And you need to work on it. And that's what has happened. Now, this person is now roaming around again and, and again and again. And this is just a circle that's happening because everyone knows that this person doesn't have a will to come back, at least have a courtesy to come back. So as I said, what needs is nothing but a self-attitude and at least an integrity issue uh, and integrity to go back at least and go and respond to this person. Hey, look, I cannot do it. Just maybe you can give this opportunity to someone else. Thank you so much for helping. Over to you. Thank you, Anzil. Definitely uh, like to add to that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I will, for, to answer your question, I mean, references do help, but references help to a certain extent. Now, as a recruiter, an in-house recruiter, and maybe Wenzel would have a different uh, version of it. As an in-house recruiter, we are always looking for candidates to fit the profiles, but we as the middle recruiter know what the hiring manager is looking for. So whilst you give me a CV and say, I gave you the CV, can you refer this? If it doesn't match, then I cannot take your reference further. 
But what they fail to understand is, oh, she cannot help me. Let's just forget about it. But that's not how it actually works. So references can help you at the point wherein you are a true fit or the right fit for the role. So references can help, but to a certain extent. I think that little bit needs to be done from your end as well. Absolutely. Right. That. Thank you for that input, uh, uh, Valencia. It, 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 I can relate to it. Uh, there are some examples where I have got received calls from uh, job seekers and when I give them suggestions on uh, on their CV or what they should do differently. And one of the most unexpected, unexpected response that I've received, I would like to share today is, imagine you are 24 hours, you have to yourself because you're a job seeker, right? And this person responds to me saying that I don't have a, I don't have time. I think I have have time to be a mom. My CV. I don't have time to, uh, to learn this thing. I said, you're a job seeker. I could only say, God bless you. I couldn't say anything else. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of different people uh, I have come across and I'm sure Wenzel and Valencia. So if you have to share their, uh, our experience itself, that would be a great list of learnings for a lot of people here. Okay. Now moving forward, um, we heard from Wenzel, who is also called the LinkedIn guru. Now, with, uh, with the time in mind, I would like Valencia to help us. Uh, what is this digital presence? Uh, I know LinkedIn is one of the best tools that has been recommended highly for job seekers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and what are your views and how you have used LinkedIn for job search and how the job seekers today, not only for looking for job, but then it gives a huge wide spectrum. It's also called a gold mine for me, right? Correct. For your career growth. And a lot of people are now changing their career, growing in their careers because this tool is uh, helping. Okay, if used very constructively with good strategy, yeah. knowing what you want and accordingly working backwards. So, Valencia, over to you if you could uh, throw some sites on uh, insights on. Sure. So, um, I think I have something that I could definitely share with you guys today because, um, in my opinion, LinkedIn is definitely the go-to tool if you're a job seeker. Now. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are already aware of what LinkedIn is, but let's let's take a look at a couple of things that uh, we should probably be aware while, of. While you're opening the uh, the screen share, I would like to ask the audience uh, so far, whatever between three of us we have shared, what is that one thing that you learned? Okay, put it in the chat box so we know that you're learning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what's that one takeaway one, that you would one take takeaway? One takeaway so far. Bring it on. I hope y'all are not sleeping. Don't give up. Okay. <laughs> Friday afternoon, cozy afternoon. Committed. Okay. Sitting in your really couches, wonderful. sitting in your comfort of your houses. Let's give up the consistency, presentation, awesome. skill and will. Okay. That's good. Being persistent, willpower, rejection, building relations, visions, positive energy, positive affirmation. That's good. Awesome. LinkedIn profile essential. Stay focused. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So... I will definitely take you to a tour of my own profile as well. I just wanted to run you all through this. So LinkedIn is basically a social network for professionals. So it's kind of like a Facebook for your career. LinkedIn is for anybody and everybody. So that's, that's really important for you to know. Um, apart from that, oops, sorry about that. It's a source for new opportunities. It's part to grow your career and a tool to connect with other professionals as well. It's one big virtual networking event. Okay. So that's to back up what Benzel just said about it. Now, of course, uh, why you have to be on it is to ensure that you can get back in touch with colleagues because it's a major part of networking, build your network before you need it. And of course, um, use your LinkedIn profile as your resume. Like I mentioned in my speech earlier, I said, it's not necessary for you to just have a CV, but also have your social presence. So this LinkedIn works as a viewing tool as well. Apply for jobs, network with new professionals, participate in relevant groups, and blog about what you know. Now, landing the job, you're going to skip that. Some interesting facts that you may or may not know is that it's got over 313 million users worldwide. And then, of course, there's 35% of users checked daily. But of course, these numbers are altered today. 42% uh, are updating their profiles on a regular base. Now, there are oh, so many recent grads out there as well. So if there are any freshers out there in the audience listening, then LinkedIn is, should be your go-to tool. 
Now, there are so many business pages if you want to diversify and not just look for a job, even business professionals are on LinkedIn. And of course, there are over 1.5 groups to join. So no matter what your interest, you've got to have a page there. And of course, above all, there are 77% recruiters who use LinkedIn and 94% use LinkedIn specifically. So you have to be there if you want to land that job. Now, what it is to do, what you need to do on LinkedIn is one, to create your profile. Creating your profile is simple. As you can see the arrow up there, it takes you to create your email address and just how you created your Facebook profile or any other profile for that matter, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the fields that you will be required to add are experience, education, photo, summary, skills. Now, people often ask me, should I put a photo? I, I'm not comfortable in pictures. I don't take good pictures. Now, that doesn't matter because what they're seeing is a digital presence, and definitely you need to ensure that you, there is a picture because we don't know what we're looking at otherwise, okay? Other than that, you've got languages, publication, organizations, honors, and awards. Now, that's pretty much a little screenshot of what my profile looks like on my homepage. And once you log in, you can go to your homepage, you've got the profile, you've got your networks, and so on, okay? And you've got your search bar where you can search for things. Now, what is the importance of the profile picture is what I wanted to highlight. Now, this is the first impression, yeah? So you've got to show a face that you would love for everyone to know and remember. So this is a good example. You see, it's front facing, she's smiling, it's got a good background. This is also a good example for the type of role you would be at. For example, if you're in marketing or something, or a photographer, this would be a good picture to show. If you were probably a consultant, this is a nice picture or even this for that matter, it's not the best, but it still looks good. And then this one, okay? So let's say if you were legal or something, maybe this would be a good picture. Let me show you poor examples now. We don't know if you're hiring you or the dog. So please don't put pictures of this on LinkedIn. Yes, it's a social platform, but you need to show your face, okay? This is not a good picture. We are not sure if you'll join and sleep on duty. Or this, because we're not sure if you need a vacation every two days. Definitely not this, because we're not sure if you're hiring a baby, which would be child labor. And above all this, this is not a picture to have, okay? So these are four examples of pictures. However, ensure that you have a good picture. So this is a LinkedIn profile checklist to ensure that you're up to date, because you have to reach a certain percentage for you to be purely or thoroughly visible to audience, and that is... This, let this be your checklist. So you've got to have a photo. You have to have catchy headline to it. Your headline could be a recruitment professional or a passionate recruiter looking to recruit people, things like that. Something, something catchy that people would look at. A summary. A summary could be your cover letter where you highlight the key areas within your profile. Your experience above all. And sure to now while your CV can be a minimum pages, your LinkedIn profile can be exhaustive. So keep on adding whatever it is because the more keywords you add, the more visible you will be. So ensure to have use the experience section and the summary section to put in as many keywords as possible. The organizations that you are part of, for example, Toastmasters could be one of them, yeah. Now, education, your volunteer experience, like I volunteered in the church to teach uh, underprivileged children. So those are the kind of experiences, the voluntary experience you can add. Skills and expertise. So ensure to add skills because when recruiters use it to search for people, these are the skill sets that we would use. Any honors or achievements that you receive, courses that you have completed, for my case, it'd be like a CIPD or any other courses that you have completed specifically for IT professionals projects, anything that you have completed or accomplished and you're extremely proud of, why not highlight them on LinkedIn? Above all, something that's important as part of the networking as well is your recommendations because your recommendations can go a long way. So while people are looking at your profile, they can take a look at how good you've been so far. I've managed to attain a, a recommendation from every manager that I've worked with. So that's one good uh, way to get yourself the next job. Now, how to build your network is follow as many groups as you can, complete and update your profile regularly, engage with the audience, write articles, engage in community uh, topics and so on. Ensure that you have recommendations like I just mentioned. Endorse people if you know them and their work. And above all, have meaningful connections. There's no point in you having 30,000 connections if out of 30,000, not even 30 can you know, help you in any given situation. So have meaningful connections. Now, um, 
something that is really important for the audience today is the job search tool. So I'm going to show you this in the live mode so you all can see exactly how to get stuff done. Okay. Um, let me just open it up for you and then I will show. So in the meantime, if there are any questions while we are going through these, it would be really nice to have them in the chat box because we're monitoring the chat box and we will take your questions at the end of the session. So I'm trying to open my LinkedIn and it's one open. Audience, one of the audiences, I don't know to use LinkedIn. Well, so, that's, that's what we're doing today. So that's yeah. what exactly we're doing today. Yeah. So uh, bear with me a second, please. Where is my LinkedIn? Here we go. Share. Can you guys see my screen? There you go. So that's what my homepage looks like. And I, as you can see, I've got a couple of connections up here waiting to be connected with. Now, what I do as a recruiter is I don't accept all connections. I see what connections could be useful for me in the future, what kind of position I'm looking for, and if those candidates are there. If there are any incomplete profiles, no profile pictures, poor titles or headlines, I just, I just disregard them because I think those are profiles that are not, you know, not going to benefit my network in any way. Uh, then, of course, there are messages that you can take a look at. So as you can see, I've got a message in box. I've got a request over here. So that see now I was, I was looking for a blockchain kind of guy, and this is the guy. So see, he's got me a message here. I've got a whole lot of notifications. Now let's take a look at that. Something that's important is the jobs for you guys. So once you go into the jobs, you have my jobs, and then you can see the type of jobs that I have uh, bookmarked in the past. It's been a while since I've looked at jobs. So um, here we go. So these are the type of jobs that are uh, applicable to me because I have put in certain keywords, okay? So if you can see, I have looked at saved posts and I've touched on people who are looking for um, you know, recruiters or managers and stuff like that. Now in the job search itself, what you could do is when you go into jobs, you search by let's say recruitment and you click enter right on the top. These are all the jobs that you can have, okay? Now, these are all recruitment related. So as you can see, Noon is looking for a talent acquisition coordinator. Novo Med is looking for a corporate recruiter in healthcare. Senior talent acquisition specialist for March of the team. Now, as you can see, my thing is off because I'm not really looking for a job, but you can turn that on if you're an active job seeker. And if you click on this little wrench thing here, you can edit the type of roles that you're looking for. So for example, you can see which location you're looking at. Do you want to, these alerts daily, weekly? Do you want it on email notification, notification or email? Then you can type the roles that you're looking for. Okay, one sec. And you just turn that on and then I'm looking actually for the button. I'll filter so then you can take a look at what type of roles that you're looking for whether it's a full-time contract temporary part-time remote working roles so you can pretty much set the type of role that you're looking at so there are a whole lot of options out here and then you choose what you want and the drop downs will come out to you here okay so now that i've turned this on weekly or daily depending on the type you choose you will get a list of jobs out here now something while you're applying for I would pay attention to is the type of role which company it is I would take the time to read the job description because sometimes the titles may be misleading it could be called a sourcing specialist but it could be in procurement maybe and not HR so they're looking for a CIPD person masters in advantage they're looking for someone with four plus years of experience in retail or FMCG and somebody who worked at uh, Marginal for the now also works at DHL and pretty much that's it. So something that I usually do is I look if there have the recruiter has been mentioned. Now, as you can see, the recruiter is mentioned here. So what I would do is I would apply for this job. And my next thing to do is take a look at Natalie's profile and probably connect with her as well and say send. So once you connect with her and if she's looking for a recruiter, there's no doubt that this person would immediately connect with you. So that pretty much sums up what you can do on LinkedIn, uh, specifically within the jobs itself. Now, what you can also do is when you click on jobs, why don't you work on the job alerts, okay? So make sure they're on and make sure that you edit the functions that you are looking for, all right? And uh, just pretty much stay in tune with your LinkedIn and that's how you would land your next job. But 
I need to point out that once you apply for jobs, it's not only necessary that you apply and leave it there. Ensure that you follow the company, try and see who's in HR, who's the recruiter, and mention, you know, try and get in connection with them and follow up on your application, telling them that you have sent a CV, you've applied online, uh, you think you fit this role for these reasons. Try and get their um, work email address as well. Put it into your Excel sheet, build your gold mine from there as well, and you're set for life. So once you build that gold mine, there's no turning back. You're always going to have a fallback. Over to you, Abel. Fantastic. Uh, Valencia, while uh, you're talking about LinkedIn, there's one question which many people are asking. Uh, is it beneficial or uh, added value to have LinkedIn premium account? Yeah, um, a premium account is always beneficial for those who want to send instant emails. But I think if you have the right connections, I don't think the premium account is entirely advisable. Because if you have the right connections, there's no doubt, and if you're applying to the right roles, there's no doubt why a recruiter would not connect with you. So the reason why you need a premium account is you get to have the person's contact information immediately rather than having to connect and wait till this person connects with you. So yes, you can have it if you want to send instant in-mails, but beware that if the in-mails are not responded to, then you lose your in-mail credits as well. So take a look at it this way. Now, if you connected with the recruiter and you sent a message and there's no response, there's a likelihood that if you had the premium account and sent an in-mail, you still wouldn't receive that response, right? So I would suggest that Try and work your way as much as you can without the premium account and use it only in cases where you are certain you meet the profile and your LinkedIn in mail will definitely be responded to. Okay, I think uh, that answers uh, the question. Super insights. Uh, now, moving forward, we covered uh, the employment trends, we covered LinkedIn, we covered CV, and now it's about how you appear for interviews. Okay. So while we do everything right, there is still a way forward, you know, there's still that you need to prepare. That is yeah. the most important crux of the job search, yeah. right? How do you present yourself and how one should be ready, prepared? So many times when I call people, just a casual call to check on uh, uh, how is your job search going? They'll be sleeping at 12 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like surprised uh, why they're in sleeping. And then they say uh, they are nothing to do, so they are sleeping. I mean, okay, so would, would that be a good energy to pick up the phone and say, hello? I mean, it's, it's just like you don't get excited to even then have the conversation. And I'm sure you, <laughs> uh, you second that uh, because you've been talking to so many uh, candidates. So from your recruitment uh, as an in-house recruiter and also Wenzel, uh, when you call candidates, uh, share your experience, how one how a candidate or a job seeker should be ready and prepared and what are the things that they can use so that they'll be in that best energy and they know what to say, what not to say and, and impressing that five minutes call, I mean, to take it to the next level of face-to-face -face interview. So it thing is getting shortlisted. So that's what. Go ahead. Wenzel or Valencia. Valencia, you want to... Okay, great. So I think as an in-house recruiter, I think, firstly, my advice to all of you out there, if you are a job seeker or a true job seeker, what I mean by true is someone who's really adamant to find your job, then I think first, your phone needs to be not on silent because you do not need to miss a call. Do not miss a single call. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, I would expect when I call my candidates, and the first time they answer in the first ring itself, because then I know that you want to get my call. You're waiting for my call. Two, when you answer the call, make sure that no matter as a job seeker, make sure that whenever you're answering the call from an unknown number specifically, ensure you're in a place where you can speak to this person because you know you are a job seeker. You are anticipating calls from a recruiter or a company. Make sure when you answer the call, you're in a quiet place. Often a person will ask you, is this a good time to talk to you? If it's not a good time, don't feel shy to say, let me call you back in two minutes or can you please call me back in a few minutes from now? Give them a time when they can call you. That's another thing. When you answer the call, be pleasant, be polite, whether you're at a senior manager level or whether you're at a bottom rung, okay? It doesn't matter. 
you need to ensure that you take the call correctly, okay? So answer it pleasantly. Hi, good evening. Yes, thank you for calling me. I think what I look for, Avil, in short, is pleasantries. So how, how you appear on the phone, clear communication, and above all, no noise in the background. And believe me, I don't think there's anything more annoying than not being able to reach a candidate when you're trying to call them and say, I need you to come for an interview tomorrow. And this person that doesn't answer your call, it's like, oh my God, you want a job or not? Why aren't you answering the call? So I think be aware that you know your phone is not on silent, answer the calls, answer every unknown number. I have heard of people I will tell me, I didn't answer the call because I don't know the number. Do you know the number that you just gonna call you for the jobs you've applied? I did not answer it because I didn't know the number. <laughs> Seriously? So that would be my advice. And sure you answer every call, even if it's an 800 number, just answer it. If it's not worth your time, you can politely just end the call. Yes. Perfect. Uh, I would like to add a couple of points, if I may. Of course, go ahead. Yes, okay. yes, please. So see, when I call a when I call a candidate, and I am sure a candidate will apply for multiple jobs, right? Correct. Now, what I want a candidate to ask me a question is, from where are you calling? Don't say, I have applied for multiple jobs, so I don't know from where you're calling. Absolutely. Now, that's the first impression that you give, because I, I myself personally have rejected such candidates when they just say, because you are either not sure where you are applying, or it's just that you're not, you're not interested. You just want to get a job just for the sake of job. Correct. Second thing. Second thing is, uh, be sure to just introduce yourself and you know don't hesitate in the sense if you have to give him more information it's fine you should be proud of yourself when you talk uh, there are a lot of people who stammer there are a lot of people who get scared i understand it's it's an interview call but understand it's just a normal conversation that's where you're impressing a recruiter or maybe an hr or, or the technical manager right there are companies wherein a technical manager first gives you a call and then it happens at hr round that's the new trend right now that's a new trend and this is what i want to just keep you updated so first thing if you are not sure from where you're getting a call just ask from where are you calling don't say i have applied i don't know from where you're calling second thing is know about yourself and the third thing is if you are confirming for an interview make sure that you're attending an interview or if you cannot just have a courtesy to call back the recruiter and say, look, hi, I've got an emergency issue. Uh, I cannot make out. And in most of my cases, where a candidate has been scheduled for an interview, but the candidate is actually not going for an interview. And I don't know what's the reason. So even we are, you know, we don't know what's happening, right? Even we will have to go back and answer, saying, okay, why the candidate did not turn up. So Correct. if you're promising someone that you're doing, it's a job, right? it can change your career at any point of time. As I said, that also gives, it is a reputation that you build among yourself with the recruiters across uh, UAE or anywhere you go. Over to you. Thank you so much for both of your insights. I think so, so useful. I'm sure all the audience here uh, who are listening to this, please take a note of this because these are the smallest things. And for me, the smallest things are like the the, the food without the salt. You miss out this salt, it makes a big difference to the food, right? It changes everything, the taste. So don't miss out on these basics. And back to basics, what I would uh, remind all of you, as a job seeker, you have to look at uh, holistically every aspect of your job search process. Okay, uh, now back to Valencia. Uh, Valencia, in, in, in the process of your job interviews uh, last year, uh, you did face a lot of rejections. Okay? Okay. And in the process, you also had to deal with interviews, not in person, in human, with human or over the phone. There's something new that you experienced. Also, share your experience so people can be looking at how they should be prepared for um, uh, such, such types of interviews as well. Yeah, I think uh, in the course of the pandemic, I think uh, most organizations are now going the virtual route because they want to keep their employees safe. So they don't want to ins they want to limit the human interaction. And I think most companies are going to take this route wherein they're going to have VOIP interviews, which is, you know, the virtual person taking your interview. 
Now, what happens in such interviews is you've got to be crisp, you've got to be clear, and your communication needs to be at par with the computer. So I had one of those, I, I forget her name now, but I had one of the interviews with a, a, with a virtual assistant who was actually asking me the questions and recording my responses. So I had to say certain words for her to to ensure that she understood what I was trying to say. So it was a little bit difficult. Um, of course, I didn't make it through that interview. I'm pretty sure I may have messed up somewhere, but I did have a virtual interview that was recorded. So I had a voice assistant or a virtual assistant asking me the questions and recording it. And as I spoke, I could see certain words getting ticked off because that's what she was looking for. And then, of course, I didn't know the result of the uh, questions, but I think job seekers need to be prepared for the new type of recruitment. So like I mentioned before, apart from your CV and your LinkedIn profile, you need to have your video CV at any given point in time because you can't be asked for that. So it's best to have it ready. And if you do it in advance, you could get it edited. We have Wenzel here. You can have it edited, cleaned out and prepared and ready to go whenever asked for. Great. Now, Valencia, this uh, besides uh, virtual interviews, um, yeah. How about video CVs? The video, uh, they first look at your video CV and then they look at, okay, should I invite him for the personal interview yeah. or not? Yeah. Right. Uh, what's your thought on this? Well, I think in order to wow someone, you would you would need to ensure that your video quality is good, your video clarity is good as well because as you speak you need to ensure that it's well recorded you're in a good place you've got the right lighting because you want the recruiter to see you in the best light so i think a good location uh, having the right content to speak about it's pretty much answering questions uh let's say in a star format as well uh, if i may uh it could be like answering simple questions i like i gave you an example of the video interviews that i had recorded it answered basic questions about myself, what I've done so far. A challenge. I explained about a challenge, challenging situation that I had faced in the star format, and that's pretty much it. So I had those videos recorded. So as and when I was asked, I would just upload these videos. Great, excellent. I think that's the best tool to kind of even for you to evaluate and summarize that elevator yeah. pitch. Because Correct. when you're asked in the interview, tell me about yourself. Uh, it's nothing but what would you say in that 60 seconds. Correct. Or in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think good to practice yourself because right now we are living in a virtual uh, uh, era or <laughs> life. Yeah. Everything happens uh, virtually, technically. Yeah. And uh, so you have to be in the best, best way to present yourself so that you can impress. Otherwise, somebody else will take that role. So remember that be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also just to add, uh, add to Valencia, one of the things that I follow in my life is um, if people around me are getting opportunities or getting the jobs, what do they, what do, they do differently? How is that person uh, speaking or communicating or how is he demonstrating his skills or how yeah, is he yeah. being resourceful? So, so, you know, I follow Tony Robbins and he says that we all have resources. We just lack the ability to be resourceful. Now, what does that right. mean? It's just that we know to communicate, but then we are not effective when we communicate to people, right? Um, we, we have done so much of work in terms of our experience, our achievements, but it is the ability to summarize how I can impress by articulating your achievements. And that is what makes you stand out, okay? Um, now we have a couple of questions and before we take, up, take on the questions, I would like to ask everyone, that you've been great audience and I really appreciate you for being uh, responsive, uh, sharing your thoughts, commenting on our questions. And I really like to congratulate all of you. And I'm sure um, with the experience shared by Valencia and Wenzel and to a certain extent from me, uh, you have a lot of takeaway to implement. We will not overload you with more information because it will become too much for you. And then <laughs> you will feel that, okay, I will do what I can but it's not our intent. It, our intent is to cover majority of the aspects where we see a job seekers probably missing out, okay? Where they are going wrong and so that they can fix those gaps. And I'm sure you have got the, uh, the information to fill those gaps. Uh, should we share, uh, Valencia, which are the top job portals in UAE so that they can start applying right away? 
provided okay. that they fix their CVs and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like think you shared your format, you shared your format of the CV. Um, how about, would it be okay that if some of them uh, are looking at changing their CV, uh, are you okay to just share the format so that they can also... Yeah, sure. I think, um, I think if someone was looking for a good format of CVs, I, I have a couple of formats that definitely can be used. But of course, the format would depend upon the type of role that they are looking at and things like that. So yeah, I'd be happy to share some formats that I have. Okay. Um, in where, terms where should, of job, how, they, how they should connect you or uh, I think they can reach out to me over uh, Gmail. I think I can share my email address towards the end and then maybe they can just reach out to me and I'll share it with them accordingly. Okay. Um, in terms of the portals itself, I would rank them such as let's say one would be LinkedIn because it's a go-to. Uh, it is definitely the way I look at it as a recruiter is I spend a lot of money to post a job on LinkedIn. If I have that much money to post a job, that means I have enough money to pay you for that role as well. However, if I were using portals such as Indeed, no offense to Indeed, but if I were posting them on Indeed, it's a free site. So it clearly means that I'm looking for cheaper means to get there. On the other hand, it also depends on the type of roles I'm looking for. If I were looking for a senior manager and so on, I would definitely go to LinkedIn to post it. But if I were looking for more of the blue collar jobs, I post it on LinkedIn because I know a majority of people are on it. Now, having yes. said that, my go-to would have probably been uh, LinkedIn, followed by, let's say, I want to work.com or maybe bait.com and followed by Nokri Gulf and Gulf Talent. These are the five I would look at oh. because they are upcoming. Good. And I have a slide to share. Uh, if, if, uh, if everybody would love to see which are the other job portals besides what Valencia shared. Okay. Sure. Let me share the slide. And uh, here you go. While you show that, Avil, I want to point out that there are certain sites out there that are called crawlers. Yes. So, for example, Indeed is a crawler. Now, mm -hmm. Indeed and Dubizel, in fact, are crawlers from this list because what they do is they take the jobs from other websites and post it onto their website. Now, what happens right. when you crawl is the job may or may not exist, but it will still reflect on these jobs. So, you just have to be mindful of that and but these are definitely the good ones. Right. Bait, LinkedIn, Gulf Talent, Nokri Gulf, these are definitely it. But I would say the go-to should be LinkedIn followed by Bait and Gulf Talent because these are vital for this region. Okay, excellent. And of course, LinkedIn, undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, have you heard of this new website, uh, which is launched by the, uh, it's an official website from the UAE uh, government. And, uh, well, not until you mentioned it to me I a couple have, of days ago. So yeah, this would be so nice. Excited. To I'm so excited and impressed. Uh, and I'm so grateful to UAE government for uh, bringing everything under one portal. Okay. Absolutely. No matter Absolutely. where you are, uh, uh, whether which country. We live in a country. very good era. We yes. live in a very good country that gives us this opportunity to actually embark on their uh, services at yes. ease. Yes. Uh, and this portal... Uh, you can actually get so much of knowledge. For example, how uh, how the employment contracts work, uh, different types yeah. of contracts, free zone contracts, free zone employment, uh, how to get an Emirates ID. If you have a labor dispute, how to go about, okay? There are legal procedures. This is, is so much that is covered in this website and kudos to somebody who has put together all of that. Uh, I'm placing the link here. So any information regards to employment and even to the extent of living in the UAE, okay, and investing in the UAE, everything is available in this portal. So I'm sure this would help a lot as much as when I wanted some information, it, 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 it is technically everything is available, okay? So even there is an option called moving to the UAE. What are the things that you need to be prepared with? So a yeah. lot of yeah. times uh, when I uh, see people visiting here without knowing much of the information uh, and they struggle and they become uh, victim of people taking money for, for placing them for jobs and they promise that there is an opportunity but then they don't land up. So is it legal to, to offer money or pay money to the agents, manpower agencies or recruitment consultants? So... Again, at your own risk. So follow and read everything that is available in this portal before you start your job search or before even you plan to uh, come here for job search. Okay. 
uh, let me stop sharing i'm sure this piece of information was useful uh, put it in the chat box if you have learnt other job portals which you are not aware okay put it in the chat box yes these are the job portals which i was not aware i was not applying there now you can start applying so please uh, let me know if that has helped you okay now let me start take, taking the questions from the audience uh, so wenzel and valencia either of you could uh, respond uh, what are the questions you're looking at where are the questions i was going through the chat yeah, so i have the questions farrel has shared the questions with me so i'll ask okay. the questions Sure, go ahead. Uh, Dimple logo has asked: Is BA required to get a lecturer job in UAE? How is the job demand for lecturers in UAE? Now, that's a little tough one for me, considering yes. I have. Okay, really let me let me let me let me uh, respond. Yeah. Uh, basically, Dimple, what you need to do is you need to do a research of uh, or connect with people who are already lecturers uh, who are teaching in universities yeah. and check with them. check with them um, what are the requirements and based on that you can do your you can work backwards so what is most important is if you are a hr professional or a teacher or an engineer first thing first thumb rule in my life is you should circle yourself around those like minded professionals okay you become an average of the five people you surround with if i want to grow in supply chain i should be surrounded with the team of supply chain professionals from senior level to junior level so i need to have a network of those professionals right uh, if you are looking for a web developer a web developer connect with people okay and you will have enough people to help you in that direction second question is uh okay any tips for adding content in fresher cv if i am a fresher so what do i what do i write and how would i build a cv I think as a fresher something that's really important is the type of projects you have ma uh, managed in your roles if there is uh, firstly of course ensure that you have a good profile picture you have a one page cv but your one page cv should ideally incorporate your jobs that you're looking for the type of experience you come with what's your educational background your education would be the top with most experienced cvs education takes the bottom of the cv but in your case the education will be right at the top any internships that you have done uh, apart from internships any projects you have managed and any other extra curricular activities that would fill up your cv okay thank you there is a question from lakhan lakhan says uh, does age matter to change accountant job after 45 I can see well, this is really a tough yes. one. Now, if you are going to be at a certain age, then there are certain roles that you cannot apply to. So, for example, if you are an accountant, maybe your next role would be to go into a senior accountant role, even if you're forty-five. But if you're an accountant applying for another role as an accountant at forty-five, that may be a problem. Uh, I hope I made sense there. I think certain roles require certain age group, fortunately or unfortunately. Now. from my side i'd be upset if somebody told me that that i'm 45 and you can't apply but at the same time if you see it from the employer's perspective the rest of the accountants in my team are below the age of 30 so i cannot have someone who's 45 amongst them because it's a cultural mismatch and i my company wouldn't want that so yes it is a problem if you're trying to apply for roles that do not match your age group yes okay i have something to add for lakin lakin don't feel dejected right age is just a number correct and what is the most important thing is how resourceful you are yeah that is the most important i know people who are working still at the age of 65 70 what do they do correct. how are they still in the organization why organization pays them continues to pay 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 them and the question to ask is how i can be that resource for organizations who believe yeah. in your abilities or believe in my abilities yeah. and capabilities and who are willing to offer me yeah okay so if 100 door shut there's 101 door can be opened that will open yeah the question is among the 200000 plus companies in uae okay there is one company who is willing to hire you yeah no matter what age you are correct provided that you fulfill their requirements
the only challenge is reaching out to those companies <laughs> that is the challenge that is what you need to do make sense lakan awesome so age is just this not a barrier never siddharth also has the same similar question is 38 years too late to get a job when 38 years just uh, a new entrant 38 is probably <laughs> just a new 28 according to me yeah, class exactly. <laughs> i yeah. don't think 38 is old uh, 45 uh, on the other hand is still not bad i think once you reach 48 49 when you're heading towards the 50s then it's a problem but because you're nearing closer to the retirement age of 60 as expats so i think um it's best 38 is is a good number next question yeah. i feel like i'm on a rapid fire around you yeah <laughs> exactly so jovita has a question is it necessary to be in the uae during job search definitely hands yeah. down there is no means of you sitting outside the country when somebody wants you immediately so i would suggest the best way to uh, reach a job search is take your leave come here apply go for interviews yeah. land the job one exception valencia if you are an exceptionally unique talent who is not available in the uae absolutely yes. okay. then they'll wait for, for you yeah. for example they had to hire lot of nurses or healthcare professionals <clears throat> to to deal with pandemic okay yeah. during those time so you got to be unique for example you have somebody like uh, a data analyst or data science uh, data scientist or or you are a digital marketing expert so probably there is an option for you okay uh, being hired from from outside of ua okay uh, nelson has a very good question apart from applying at linkedin is it better to apply through companies career portals if i were you i would apply both on the career portal as well as on linkedin because the visibility is higher unless it's tied in or linked to linkedin then maybe not but i would still go a step further and apply on both okay so as long as you want a job no matter where you apply no, as long as it's like no, you're you are knocking the doors exactly. of organizations and so knock and you shall the door be open right so you got yeah. to keep knocking doesn't matter Absolutely. i mean as uh, valencia had made a contact list of all the email ids from where she got it from people the job vacancies that she saw and she she took those email ids and then she you know made a list it's a gold mine so don't hesitate as see for me job search is letting everybody know that you are available first thumb rule Okay. Yeah. You never know your neighbor would be looking for a candidate for his or her organization, and the person wouldn't know being a neighbor. And I, I know people who have faced this challenge. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Your security also should know building security, right? So that that's a thumb rule, and this is given. Any HR expert who is in 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 the view of um, helping job seekers says one thing. everybody in your contact list if you have 1000 connections on your phone they should know that you are looking out and i had vacancies uh, coming directly from uh, the hrs of companies and they asked i will do you have anybody to refer and at that point you should i should be having in my mind people who are looking out but imagine if people are not reaching out to me and saying that they are looking out they missed that opportunity so i'm telling you let everybody know that you're looking out for a job don't hesitate this is a you got to be shameless here please okay uh ivan says what to do when mind goes blank during interview excellent I, I like that no, there is no problem with that as long as you don't flutter and you know fluster yourself so i think you need to just ask the recruiter can you give me a few seconds let me gather my thoughts there's no shame in asking for it but let them know that uh like give me a minute please let me think about it and compose yourself in that one minute and bounce back the stronger you bounce back it shows that you can handle a stressful situation yes and that's why it is important to do mock preparations you do yes. mock interviews you sit with your friend your colleagues or ex colleagues or anyone that you trust or that you can talk to Uh, tell them that look i need uh, one hour of you uh, these are the questions ask me and i will respond and take feedback or like uh, i would be happy to take mock interviews <laughs> or venzel would be happy to take mock interviews really so reach out there's no hesitation on that okay uh, that's why it is important to take critical evaluation of yourself and 
another thumb rule interview is we we have interviews on a daily basis actually so you meet somebody new ask where are you from what do you do it's like an interview right but don't think that it is an interview have a conversation company is looking at talking to you because they need you so it's both ways it's a win win situation and you can't get nervous rather you couldn't you can't allow yourself uh, to fumble because you just have to have a conversation it's just a conversation right how you and your friend sit in a coffee shop and uh, have a conversation similar to that you have to have that kind of thought process that the other person that you are talking to no matter what level the person is he is another human being and he is talking to you because he needs you to fill that position for the organization making sense yeah okay another question interesting one from sinu i can't connect with a recruiter as i don't have linkedin premium how else i can connect okay uh, i would like to answer this now uh, you don't need to have a premium account it's not mandate okay uh, i never had a premium account so i still got interview calls it's all about using your linkedin in a right way uh, you have to go post your content you show your work over there definitely linkedin premium will help you to reach out to recruiters directly but it's again it's your choice because it's it's what you pay for and if you think it's an investment uh, that's the best thing but uh, i never had one but i will leave it to valencia also to add add in some points no Another i think one, i agree one. with you we already covered this topic a premium account is not mandatory you can connect with the recruiter connect with connections of the recruiter and you will you will definitely be able to connect yes. with that yes yes uh, in fact uh, uh, just to add to val uh, there are people who have reached out to me i will um, i'm applying for this job and um, this person that i am connecting uh, he is already in your list he is already in your connection can you put a word okay so for example Uh, valencia is applying for a job in wenzel's organization and wenzel is my friend but valencia is not connected to wenzel so when uh, valencia is asking me can you put a word of reference to wenzel so you getting my point so use your yeah. network okay yeah. for your benefit yeah, yeah. that's how you uh, capitalize on your network yeah and they say right network is the net worth network is the net worth indeed absolutely okay. another one question uh, i studied something but working in a different job any tips well if you're happy there then stay there if you want to change <laughs> then that is the question okay. so i think uh, if you want to change i would suggest you'll have to start from the beginning you'll have to go back and uh, probably within your organization try and get into the role that you actually want to be and then grow up from there because i don't think there'll be organizations out there that will entertain you without the experience yep another thing that to add to valencia one is your passion one is your purpose okay yep. connect this to passion and purpose so what's your purpose basically if you are a marketer i want to grow in marketing but i've got job in an accounting uh, uh, in a accounting role so do you like to do accountant okay does that fulfill you no then change it uh, by networking with people who are in marketing let them know that you are passionate about marketing and you want to be a marketer and then people will recognize you and eventually you might land in your job okay i think that's the best tip that i could give yeah uh, more information feel free to reach out to us uh, i think we are up with time um, and um, i think we did the best to cover uh, or make justice to the topics or the theme of today future to be Uh, bright okay and i am sure it's not only bright but it is right <laughs> okay um, valencia and wenzel any any thoughts to share before we uh, hand over to alicia no i just want to thank konkan you were for actually creating this platform where we could actually share our knowledge and expertise in this aspect and of course uh, thank you avil and wenzel you've been great alongside with me and like you know backing me up on certain things so just that's it i think i really wish everybody good luck the market's open out there just use the tips 
uh, apply it immediately so that you don't forget it. And I think there's no way stopping you from, you know, getting your next job. Awesome. Wenzel, any few words from you? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you, Konkan Yuva. Uh, deep gratitude for the entire Konkan Yuva team and uh, my panelist speakers, that is Avil and Valencia. And my message to all over there, maybe if you're seeing it right now or maybe after a decade, just never give up. Just have hopes and keep working on it. You need help, just ask. There are uh, people over there who will definitely, uh, you know, they will take some time because if they see that you are hungry to do something, uh, as Les Brown says, if you're hungry, uh, you will be recognized outside and there is a way all the time because uh, I had the way, uh, I found the way and uh, definitely you will. So thank you so much once again and uh, over to you. Yeah. Wenzel, before uh, uh, you leave, uh, I think it's important to share our email IDs. Uh, if you have the slide with uh, our email IDs, please share or you can put it in the chat box. Uh, audience, please be there so that you can then later connect with us. We are sharing the email IDs. You can take a screenshot and connect with us. Thank you for attending this session. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. And uh, over to Alicia. Um, thank you all speakers um, and the participants. Uh, we hope that it was a very enriching and uh, enlightening uh, experience for all of you all and there are good takeaways. Um, we are having this recording on YouTube as well. So we will circulate the link as well as uh, I will um, now hand over to Dalton who will give us the vote of thanks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure for us at Open Yuma to host this webinar. I would like to thank the speakers, the members of Company Yuma, Yam, and all of you for attending and making this event a success. Lastly, I wish you all the very best for your future and God bless. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon.